Hey everybody, Alyssa here from Becoming Memories. Thanks so much for joining me for another How to Kill a Kit with Style video. This is going to be a process video using this background paper, which was kind of the inspiration for my entire kit, as well as this cut file. And I have already backed it using these papers here from the kit. The orange came from one of those four by six cards that was had some orange in it. It was kind of the only orange in my kit, strangely enough. Um, so I used it. So this is a word, wood veneer letter from Heidi Swap, and I am trying to decide here which one I want to use, and I decided I really do want the memory one, but I want it to be darker. And so I'm trying here with a wood stain, I'm sorry, with a distress stain, but it just didn't really take, it kind of turned it a little bit gray, but not too much, not enough. So now I'm trying with Distress Oxide, and you'll see here in a minute that that does not work either. Apparently these Heidi Swap wood veneer words that are painted like that have some sort of coating on it that kind of resists uh, color. <laughs> so we're going to pull out the trusty black craft paint because surely this will work right. <laughs> <laughs> At this point I was thinking, good grief, I didn't think this word was going to be so hard to turn black, but apparently <laughs> it is. So here I go with a paintbrush, and this of course does work, as you can see. So I just um, put it on a little piece of packaging and held it down with my finger and spread that acrylic paint on there. And um, it actually took it really nicely. I think I did, maybe I had to do a little bit of touch up. I can't remember, but it wasn't, it was not a big deal. So now I am trying something else with this foam stamp. And I'm going to be really honest and tell you, I don't remember what I'm going to do with that. <laughs> um, oh, yes, I know what I was going to do. I was um, attempting... I thought to use some black stamps on my background there in circles to kind of mimic the shape of that cut file, which you can see over there on the uh, right hand side. And at the end of the day, I decided that wasn't really what I wanted to do. And um, I, here I'm trying to use some of this black acrylic paint diluted with water on. Um, on this piece of cardstock to test that look and I decide I don't really like that either and at this point I'm kind of and I'm, I'm wanting to do something to the background but I don't really know what I'm debating using this gray <laughs> um, molding paste I was kind of all over the place here so here we go. I'm pulling out some gesso. This is the Vicky Booten gesso, and I just got it at Tuesday morning. And so there was a ton of it there on the foil wrapper, and I just smushed that on the paper so that I could use that. And this is a little bit of an experiment because I didn't really have any idea how opaque this gesso would or wouldn't be. And uh, I gotta tell you, I probably wouldn't have done that. I should, probably shouldn't have done that. I probably... Um, or I should have stopped right there, but I didn't. <laughs> so the thing about mixed media is I've learned you just, you got to just not be scared of it and you have to just try it. Here I am drying my, uh, gesso. That's the, uh, officially the correct way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, moving on. We have some distressed oxide there in fossilized amber, and I am going to add some broken china, I believe, to that uh, fossilized amber. And I'm going to use my distress tool there to smudge them around on this background. And, uh, you know, this is one of those times when my mixed media doesn't really turn out quite the way I was hoping. And honestly, every time I look at the layout, I keep wishing I hadn't done it. But I don't have another sheet of that background paper, so I just went with it. And it really, I think it's really okay in the end. But like I said, you know, sometimes the key is to learning, to learning mixed media and to having some amazing mixed media attempts that you really love is you just, sometimes you have to practice a little bit and practice doesn't always 
turn out perfectly. In fact, I have two other layouts that I will be uploading here in the next week or so that I did something different on the mixed media background that I've ever done before, but it turned out great. And, and I'm going to credit 100% those, all those times when I practiced and it didn't turn out great as the reason for the success of the times when it does turn out great. So, you know, don't be afraid to just jump in and try it. And honestly, as I'm looking at it right now, uh, it doesn't look as bad as I feared. So, you know, <laughs> when it, when, when you're doing something and it doesn't turn out quite the way you imagined, uh, sometimes I can really throw you, but I think a lot of times it isn't as bad as what we, we think it is, or we feel like it is at first. So I'm now starting to just kind of go through the embellishments from my kit and I'm trying to figure out where in the world to take this layout from here. I honestly have not used cut files on a boy page very often. Um, and so it, it kind of threw me because my go-to is usually to put florals uh, and um, scripty things and swirly things and leaves and that sort of thing um, with my cut files. <laughs> And obviously, in this case, that is a picture of my son in his life jacket next to the pool. And the cut file and the colors and everything, this is just really not a layout destined for flowers. So um, here I am cutting a piece of the journaling page that I included in the kit. This is from the Chamel Box of Crayons collection. And I just cut it there on kind of a weird um, angle because there are... You can't see it very well on the camera, but there actually are some holes and some gaps in this cut file where the background shows through. And I didn't want my journaling card to show past that first row of little uh, circles or spokes or wheels or whatever they are. So hopefully that made sense. Uh, <laughs> I don't feel like I'm making very much sense today, but um, I'm sure you can follow along right? <laughs> so this is a camera. This is from Go Now Go by Chamel. And uh, this is the first time I've cut into that camera page. And I think these cameras are adorable. So I'm just fussy cutting it out. And I believe actually this does make it onto the final layout, but not in that position. <laughs> um, I think one of the reasons that I love fussy cutting so much is that none of the pieces that I fussy cut have adhesive on the back. And I realize, of course, that you can take a sticker and de-sticky it um, with some baby powder or, you know, sticking it on your clothes or whatever, but um, that seems like an extra step to me. <laughs> and so when I fussy cut something, see, there goes the camera. When I see something that I could fussy cut and I can move it around a million times and it doesn't it holds up very well with that. I guess that just kind of makes me happy. I did a layout that I will post. It's going to come, come up here, not till September 2nd, which is sad because I love it, but it's for a blog hop that I'm very excited about participating in. But in that uh, layout, I used some pieces that I had fussy cut from a piece of paper years ago, seriously, probably three or four years ago. And uh, when I fussy cut something and I don't use it on a layout right away, I stick it in a storage container. And every now and then I pull that out and dig out some treasures. And it makes layouts come together very, very quickly when my fussy cutting is already done. So there's an, a, little, a little idea for you if you're looking for something to do in front of the TV. Or maybe you fussy cut a bunch of pieces and then they don't make it on the layout. Make yourself a little inspiration slash quick layout box and uh, have some fun with it. So check back on September 2nd. I show in that video how I store those and what that box looks like. So um, stay tuned for that. Okay, so back to the layout at hand. This is a wood veneer piece from Pink Fresh, And there is that little camera again. And I have now moved that journaling piece up and cut it down again. And I'm still not sure I like it there. Although that is where I end up placing it at the end. So this is, this was layout was kind of, this is the layout out of the whole kit that I was least happy with at the end of the, at the end. And, um, you know, it's okay. It's not bad. And the more I look at it, the more I actually like it. But at the time it was so different from what I was picturing in my head that, uh, I just felt very critical of it. And I, I didn't 
like it. But now I do. I look back at the pictures now and I'm like, okay, that's actually pretty good, Alyssa. I don't know what you were so critical about. And you know, I would just tell you, as a scrapbooker, I'm sure you have those moments. And um, I've learned over the years, I've been scrapbooking for almost 15 years now. And uh, I will say, there are times when you just got to walk away <laughs> and you got to leave it alone and you got to walk away until you can come back with a more um, unbiased or objective perspective. There we go. That's the word. I was actually working on a layout a couple of nights ago and filming um, for something coming up, something exciting coming up in August on my channel. And uh, I, I shut the video off and I wasn't still really wasn't still too happy with the layout but it was kind of like one of those things where you're like it is time to just walk away and I came back the next day and I knew exactly how to finish it and now I love it so sometimes perspective really really is everything those pieces there are some fussy cut or not fussy cut sorry silhouette pieces that I had previously cut at different times for different projects and never used and I keep them together um, I also like to cut stars arrows um some florals, some gears, things that I use frequently. A lot of times when I do pull my silhouette out and it's connected, I will cut a page of labels or a page of stars or a page of arrows and just keep them for times when I need a little something, but I don't necessarily want to get up and pull out the silhouette and plug it in and and do all of that and I cut them in whites and creams craft um, gray black neutral colors primarily so that they can kind of go with anything and they come in so handy like I highly recommend doing that if you are someone who likes little bits and pieces and do you often use those kinds of general shapes uh, it is totally worth fussy cutting them in advance and having them at hand because I feel like if I just needed one little arrow, I probably would never pull out the silhouette for that. So anyway, I'm getting off track now. Um, I'm not really doing a whole lot on this layout at the time, the moment. That is the um, the sticker sheet you saw there from Photoplay. And I do end up pulling a couple of stickers off there. There's that orange one up at the top. This is epic. And then that blue one there, the blue arrow. So I pull out these puffy stickers, and these are from American Crafts. They're from the Remarks line, which I'm not even sure they're still making. Um, but I wish I had about 15 sheets of these little puffy stickers. There's hearts, there are dots, there are stars, and those bigger ones down at the bottom have like ampersands and such on them. And uh, it's kind of a funny color combination on that little, on the card there. But they are so great. There's white, black, orange, teal, pink, and they work on just about every project. And um, at the time that I'm actually doing this voiceover, I have almost killed that sheet and I missed it already. <laughs> if I ever find them again, I bought those at Tuesday morning. If I ever find them again at Tuesday morning, I will buy every single one I can possibly get my hands on because they're amazing. And they take the place of enamel dots, but they're puffy and they're cute and they have stars and hearts and I just love them. Okay, so anyway, moving on. That is the chipboard sheet from October Afternoon Daily Flash, as you can see. And I'm just, I'm just trying to kind of add some more to this page so that it feels done to me. At this point, that is basically what is happening. And there I am thinking about it again. And this is about the point when I decide that really this layout is is pretty much done. So um, I put that border sticker back on there because I didn't like it. I think the problem really was at the end of the day, I loved that background paper and I loved that cut file. And I should have just simplified and stuck with that and done a nice, clean, simple layout. And I didn't do that. But like I said, I end up liking how it turned out. And... Um, you know, boy pages sometimes can be a little more of a challenge because the supplies are not as readily available that are geared more toward boys. So those were some black spatters there with the coal tattered angels mist. I've been using that a lot. I need to find a replacement black because I'm almost out. It's very sad. 
So anyway, there's the finished layout. Um, here are some close-ups for you. Thanks so much for taking a look. I hope you will like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And I hope my rambling didn't put you too off. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.